Hello friends, this video on perimeter and area part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we have discussed areas of so many different geometrical figures, let us talk about one more geometrical figure. So what do you see on the screen? So on one side you see a small girl and on the other side is like an elderly woman. Now for both of them, if you look at their bangle sizes, you would see a, a, a noticeable difference between the two. A small girl would have a smaller bangle, whereas an elderly woman would have a bigger bangle. Now looking at these two bangles, let, let's assume that the color of the bangles are the same, the, the texture and the quality of the bangle is also same. So how do we distinguish between the two bangles? So you would say that the sizes are different. But what determines the size of the bangle? So if you observe them very closely, you would see that when we say that a bangle is small, we mean to say that the length of the boundary is small. So that is why the bangle is small. When the length of the boundary is bigger, then the bangle is also bigger. Similarly, when you look at the area covered by this bangle, so the total area inside this bangle is only this much. Whereas the total area inside the bigger bangle is quite big. So basically the sizes of the bangles vary because the two bangles enclose different areas. They, the length of their boundaries are also different. So these are certain things which we are going to talk about in the next section. So when we talk about these bangles, we are basically talking about circles, right? So bangles remind you of circle. So when you think of a circle, we talk about two things, area of a circle, that means the total region which is enclosed within the circle and circumference of the circle. So circumference is nothing but the total length of the boundary of the circle. So these are the two things that we are going to discuss in this section. So first we will talk about circumference of a circle. The circumference, as I said, is nothing but the length of the boundary of a circle. So let's say that uh, there is a meeting going on. So it's, it's like a circular table in between. So now if I ask you that what is the length of the boundary of this circular table? So here I am not concerned about the region which is enclosed within the circle. I am only concerned about the total length of the boundary. So what is the boundary for this circle? This is the boundary, right? The red mark shows you the boundary. So we are only concerned about the length of this boundary. So that is what we are looking for. And that is called circumference. So circumference in a way is nothing but perimeter. Like when we talk about perimeter of a square, we are concerned about the length of the boundary. Perimeter of a rectangle, we talk about perimeter of a parallelogram. So similarly, so circumference is basically the same thing as perimeter. So perimeter of a circle is called as circumference. So let's take another example where circumference is useful. Let's say that there is a farmer and he has his share of land and luckily or unluckily his share of land is in a circular shape. So his field is in the shape of a circle. So now let's say that he decides to put a boundary on his field. So in order to put boundary, he needs some material, right? Some maybe either some wires or uh, some wooden pillars to make that boundary. So how much wire does he need or what is the length of the wire that he would require to put a boundary on that circular field? So how will he know that? He will know that only when he knows the total length of the boundary of the circle. So this total length of the boundary of the circle is nothing but circumference of a circle. So this is known as circumference. Now the question is how do we measure the circumference of a circle? Because uh, if you think of any circular object around you, maybe a coin or a bangle of course. So when you look at their circumference, when you look at their boundary, what do you see? The boundary is curved. So do you think you'll be able to measure the length of the boundary using a ruler? Not really because you know the ruler is straight and this is curved. So how are we going to measure the entire length using the ruler? We can't. So we need to follow some other trick to find out the circumference of the circle. So what we do is you take a coin, mark a point on the coin. So like how we did it here. So we have marked a green point. Okay. Now what we do? 
you place the coin in this fashion that is you place the coin perpendicular on the floor or on the floor or on the table or wherever on, on a flat surface and then you rotate it in this fashion and you just rotate it for one circle like you started from here and then you came here so what you did you started from this point so let us look at the rotation once again so we have marked a point here we start rotating it clockwise such that we rotate it only till the point when this green point comes back to the ground so we started from here this is our starting point so we are rotating it and you see the green point comes back here so we just rotate it once Fine. Now you make a note of the point from where you started and you make a note of the point where you reached. Now you join the two points and what do you get? You get a straight line. So what does this straight line indicates? This straight line indicates the total length of the boundary of this coin because when you I mean, when you rotated it for one complete circle, you basically covered the entire distance as the length of this boundary of the coin. So that is what we actually did. So now what is this length? So now you can measure this length very well using a ruler. So take a ruler, measure this length. Now whatever this length is, this length is nothing but the circumference of this coin. So this is the trick which we followed in order to find out the circumference of a circle. So what we did was the logic behind this was that we make we mark a point of the coin rotate it for one complete circle. So what happens the distance covered is equal to the total length of the boundary of the coin and that is how we find the circumference. Now, do you think that this method is a very convenient one? So wherever you see a circle, you make all these arrangement and then you make that circle rotate and then you find out the circumference. Now, this method is fine to find out the circumference for the first time, but it cannot be used as a very convenient method because this is not convenient. So what do we do to uh, reach to a generalized uh, definition or a generalized formula for circumference. So what we do is using the same method, we repeat the process of finding the circumference of a circle for three to four circles of different sizes. Like as you see on the screen, the yellow circle is a very small one. Pink one is bigger. The blue one is yet still bigger and the green one is the biggest. So you have four circles of different sizes and you find out their circumference by the same technique as we mentioned in the last slide. Now an interesting thing that you observe out of these four set of measurement is that the circumference of a circle is always greater than three times the diameter of the circle. So for each of these circles, this, this is the length of the diameter. Diameter is the line that passes through the center of the circle. So this is the length of the diameter. Now as the circle becomes bigger, the diameter also becomes bigger. So it is found that circumference of a circle is always more than three times its diameter. That means, let's say this is circumference. So this circumference is always greater than slightly more than three times the diameter, that is 3D. Now, to be more precise, so if, if you try to make it more accurate, the calculations, you see that the circumference is actually equal to 3.14 times the diameter of the circle. Now what is the diameter of the circle? So diameter is nothing but 2 times the radius that is 3.14 into 2R. Now what is this 3.14? 3.14 is roughly the value of pi. So pi's value is considered as 22 by 7 or 3.14. So pi into 2 into R. Therefore, we can say that circumference of a circle is equal to 2 pi r. So if we know the radius of a circle, we will be able to find out its circumference. So this is how we arrived at a generalized definition of circumference of a circle. So now finding the circumference of any circle became very easy.
Now, please remember that this basic relationship of circumference was obtained by observations. That means this, uh, the process of finding out the circumference was repeated for different circles of different radii and looking at that observations, it was found that circumference is roughly equal to 3.14 times the diameter of the circle. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.